Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I have Scott Barstad here with me. So Scott, you joined my program in January. So New Year. January, that's much. correct. Um, yep. And if I have your, a brief understanding of your story, right? Basically, your wife wanted to ask for a separation back in December. And things were going downhill for a bit there. Uh, mm. And it even got to the point where she actually blocked you from all social media, the text, whatever it is, didn't want to speak to you ever again but we are here now. So I guess just for the audience, uh, outline for us, what was it like when you found me in January or even go a few months before then just to paint us a picture of what, how things were like? Oh uh, yeah, it was, it was rough. Um, you know, our, our relationship really for, I'd say the good last three years, um, our relationship was pretty rocky. Um, walking on eggshells, essentially, just trying to avoid quarrels because nothing ever got solved. And it just continued to drive us further and further apart. Um, so kind of the last few months, it had gotten to the point where we weren't even really talking, you know, living together. Um, yeah. We'd exchange just like information that needed to be exchanged, exchange but we weren't having fun. We weren't laughing. Um, it was, it was rough. So, you know, I knew our relationship was in trouble, but I didn't know what to do about it. So I just kept on like, well, maybe if I, you know, maybe if I, I pick up this extra chore, that'll make her happy. <laughs> um, you know, stupid stuff like that, where it's just like trying to buy or you know, win affection or something like that without actually addressing what the root of the issue was. Yeah. Um, so essentially it's like over time you became more and more like roommates, right? It's yeah. You don't 100%. talk about deep stuff, no emotional talk. It's just, yep. are we getting our chores? Are we getting our finances? Are we getting, are we surviving here? Yeah. As long as we are yep. and I can help you. And I think a lot of men do this too. They do chores because they think mm -hmm. like, ah, when she wants divorce, I can say, but how come you don't appreciate Yep. This yep. Or that. But I do this, I do that. This is my value. And that's what we, we're going to learn here is like, this is superficial value that doesn't really count in a relationship in a modern day relationship, at least, you know, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, so December, uh, she told you she wanted to separate. Yes. How did she bring it up? Uh, what did she say? Were the reasons? What did she say? Um, Pretty much that she just wanted space. Um, you know, it had she presented it as, you know, kind of like a trial type thing. She just needed some space to clear her head, you know, to reevaluate, you know, what she was thinking about the, the relationship, um, that she loved me, but she wasn't in love with me. Um, she just needed, you know, the space to find herself. Um, yeah. And so, of course, my reaction is the absolute worst, which is to go full-blown needy. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong here. Our relationship is great. You know, don't, don't leave. We can work this out together. You know, completely, completely just, yeah, do, doing everything wrong at that point. Yeah. Um, I guess the assumption here that you're making also is that at that time, when she asked for separation, she also implied that she didn't really want to work on this. It, it's really yeah. leave me alone and yep. I will think about this myself, but there's yep. nothing you can say. I don't want to talk about this with you. And so I think that caused the panic, right? It's like, oh, you oh, mean yeah. now I have to let go of the ropes and let you decide my fate? <laughs> right. And what yep. happens to this relationship, which is really scary. Um, so I guess, so you got needy. Obviously that pushed her away even further. Yep. And then what happened? Well, so we, it was about a month. We stayed living in the same house together. Um, that didn't go well. Um, Wait, what was it like in that same house? Like, were you guys talking now or was it even uh, more tense? Like le even less talking? More tense, more <laughs> tense. I, I'd say same level of talking, but the talking was explosive. So yeah. um, any conversation turned into an explosion of, you know, I'm annoying you know, I'm that, you know, whatever insult, whatever it is in the book, just thrown, you know, my way. And, you know, to be honest, deservedly so for how I was mm. behaving. 
um, you know, I completely smothered with just, it, it was bad. It was bad. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> cringy, cringy when you look back. <laughs> um, so when did she start? So I, I realized that, uh, I remember from your story, she actually started seeing other men too, right? Yes. Yeah. So that when did was, that come about? Yeah. So that was uh, March, April. Um, okay. And what she had told me that she had created like an online dating account, stuff like that. Hmm. And, you know, wasn't looking for a relationship, was just, you know, going out and having, you know, drinks with people and stuff like that. Um, but Back at that time, you know, I'd been in the program for a couple months at that point. I, I still was not very secure with, you know, mm -hmm. my, my new mindset and my new approach. So there was a, a lot of hard conversations that I wasn't really prepared to have. You know, I'd kind of dan dance around on the surface on them, but I wouldn't really get deep into them. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just... You know, I, I poked around at what she meant by it and what her intentions were, but I didn't really get too deep with it um, until it came out. In, yeah, I don't know, uh, May or June when she, okay. you know, said that she'd been dating this guy and, you know, he's this, you know, great guy. It was a great match for, her. you know, he's outgoing, attractive, you know, all these things going on for him. And, you know, basically she was, loving life so yeah yeah so just to get the timeline straight december she told you she wanted to separate january you joined the program yep. march she started seeing other people and i think that's yep. the misconception people have about the program is like this is not a quick fix this no. is changing your very deep subconscious like this is no joke right nope. this is changing everything about you and i think yep. in order for us to really showcase our changes to our partner in a meaningful way it takes that it doesn't take this one or two week journey of like, look at me, you know, it takes yep. a lot more than that. Um, but we'll yeah. get into that deeply, I'm sure later on. So, okay. So she started seeing this other guy Yep. and it almost became official. It pretty much became like a thing yep. like where she was actually invested in that relationship because yep. this guy seems to have everything that she was looking for. Yeah. Um, when did you get blocked? <laughs> uh, it was around that same time frame. I, I think it was towards the end of June, okay. um, you know, I, I had made a post on uh, Facebook. I was, I was just out doing some stuff with my daughters and uh, she had thought my post was kind of like a subliminal uh, hit at her, which, mm. which it wasn't. Um, but it's just kind of like, it, that's a perfect snapshot of where we were with that relationship. Everything was just misunderstood. Everything misunderstood. was just assumptions were always bad about each other yeah right yes. yep. yeah so it got to the point of you know just blocking on social media um you know the conversation was okay well we're officially getting divorced now because i don't want you're you're a bad person i don't want you mm -hmm. in my life um you know only contact me when it has to do with kids uh no outside conversation outside of that stuff like that so it was pretty pretty yeah. dark so i mean and that's right at that same time she started the divorce filing process going through and filling all the paperwork and um so yeah i, I mean it got to that yeah. point so it's like started with separation see, seeing other men divorce paperwork was already in the process of filing not much yep. conversations happening about the relationship nope. no much opportunities to actually show your new self per se in the traditional no. sense of that word um yeah. Many would say quite hopeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there was probably yeah. it was probably a solid three, four week period where literally the only conversation we had was like a one sentence text back and forth about you know dropping the kids off at four o'clock at your place. Okay. Um, outside of that, for about a month, there was there was no contact, conversation, nothing. Yeah. So, transport us to now. Um, you were telling yeah. me a story before we got on this call about how your wife actually now it's kind of reversed before she was comparing you to this other guy. Now yeah. she's comparing other people, other relationships yep. to this role model that is you. Yep. Tell me how yep. that's like. It's bizarre. I mean, every day is so <laughs> bizarre. Uh, it's awesome. 
Um, it's, it, you know, it's been the most fulfilling, challenging, you know, journey, you know, and, and really you could say 11 months is a long time, you know, but really it, it's flown by. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, she's, she, she was talking to me the other day about, um, you know, just kind of her realizations of what she wanted out of relationships and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that said, you know, there's stuff in the past that I had, you know, done and that she found to be annoying, but now just realizing that, no, that's actually what I do want in the relationship. And, you know, there, there was stuff that I did, which were issues. But now with my approach of just being open to talk about those things and being yeah. open to change. And it's just yeah. a completely, complete, it, it's, you know, I'm still the same person. It's just my approach, my approach in life is just different. Yeah. So I, yeah. I maintain my personality, maintain my, my, all my annoying traits that I have, but my approach to it is completely different now. Yeah. And that's the big difference. Good, good. So I guess divorce is out of the picture. <laughs> For now, yeah. For now, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're we've uh so we're we're not you know, we're not officially calling ourselves anything at this point outside of we're just working on it, working through it. Um we've yeah. been think... living together now for about three weeks. Okay. Um, moved back in together. Um so far it's been great um still allowing still allowing each other to maintain their own you know space um you know if if you know if, if i need some alone time or space or something like that we'll take it same thing with her um and we're just kind of working through it so if yeah anytime is, something you know, comes up we're, we're this, talking about it yeah but this is how actually how anticlimactic getting a right? relationship back is right it's like a lot of people think like <laughs> oh my gosh we reconciled we're official right. it's very yeah. like that so i don't understand how some of these other coaches they can like say oh we have a 70 something percent success rate i'm like how do you even measure that sure <laughs> like there's so many softer criterias to that i don't know yeah but um okay let's get that deeper so yeah. we painted a picture here of what it was like in the beginning yep. what it was like now yep um I want to talk about this period between January when you discovered the program and you started to change and shift internally yeah. to around May when yep. you actually kept seeing other people, didn't mm -hmm. believe your changes. This is what we call the paradox of change. Yep. If you have been behaving in a certain way for years yep. and now you take a program or anything you do that change, you change yourself in the correct ways. There's no way your partner is going to believe you right away. No. In fact, that belief needs to go through the suspicion stage, which actually makes it seem like everything becomes harder in the short term. Like yes, whatever doing whatever you're doing becomes it's not working. It's pushing yep. her even further away. She's becoming more angry, more suspicious, uh, pulls away from you even more. Tell me your thinking in that time because this is a journey that every single client of mine goes through. Oh, I went through this, but tell me your yeah. thinking in that five months, because I was telling you this whole time, look, this is the paradox of change. This is the paradox of change. It, you yep. will get through it. Yep. You're just going to keep with your internal shift. But what were you thinking, honestly? Oh, brutal, brutal, <laughs> to be honest, brutal. Um, you know, I, I believed in what I was doing. Um, I believed, you know, with following the process that you know, some good would come from it. What, whether or not we got together or not, I, I couldn't answer that, but I at least felt like we'd be able to, you know, get to a good point, even if we end up getting separated or divorced, where we could actually maintain some level of like friendliness. Mm. Um, so when I started the program and I made so many of the, you know, beginner mistakes of, whether it was, you know, trying to treat everything with like scripts, you know, I'd, I'd listen to you, how eloquently you would, would uh, state things. And I'd basically not verbatim, but pretty damn close. <laughs> and 
her response would be like, you sound like a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Like that, that's not how you talk. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't believe your changes. Stop talking to me. Stop asking questions. I got that one a lot. If, if you ask, <laughs> yeah, if you ask me another, if you ask me another question, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. <laughs> so there's just a lot of that. And, and the resistance, I mean, honestly, the resistance for conversations lasted through July. Um, yeah. Really after that point where the silence got broken after being blocked. So we'd have surface level conversations, but if I tried to address anything that had to do with relationship, anything that had to do with how she was feeling, um, it instantly got blocked. It got shut yeah. down immediately. And, and it would just be her ac accusing me of trying to do something like manipulative, like I'm just trying to manipulate her, um, you know, it, all of that. So it was, it was, it was rough. It was really yeah. rough. But what's interesting, and what I like about your approach, I remember this, was in order to bust through this paradox of change, uh, to break through this period where your partner is really suspicious of your changes, et cetera, mm -hmm. you need two ingredients. You need consistency. Yep. Right. And consistent, not in just the obvious things you do, but the subtle things you do, like in the micro expressions, micro tones, everything yep. needs to be consistent. But it also needs to be right the right process, yep. the right kind of consistent. Like if you're consistent in a bad way, you're not going to break through that. Yeah. All right. So what I like about yours is, you know, when people learn about this concept of the paradox of change, that there, it, every journey always starts with this part where your partner is suspicious. A lot of people just say, okay, if they get resistance, if their partner says like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. If you keep asking questions, they just yep. say, oh, well, I just need to keep going because eventually I'm going to break through that. Yep. But what I like about you was you said, no, no, no. If she's resisting my frameworks, mm -hmm. my approach, I must be doing something wrong. And you kept asking questions. You kept yep. learning, which is beautiful. Yep. And so you, you know, a lot of people, when they first learn the frameworks, and the reason why we don't teach scripts, we'll teach frameworks is because yep. I don't, this cannot be a script, right? Your partner nope. can see right through that. And so no. when members come in for the first time, they use it like a script. Yeah. But then you see the A players in the program who have done this for six, eight months, 12 months, yeah. they're dancing in the conversation, right? They, they yep. don't even, you don't even know what they're doing. It's like a magician. It's like, whoa. Yep. And then their partner is like, oh, I, I, I can't help but notice yep. <laughs> your changes. Was yeah. that kind of how your journey was like as well? Like with your evolution and your mastery of the frameworks over time? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a couple of things. And, and one of the things you hit on really struck because I, I got so focused on like doing things right. So like every conversation of being like, okay, well, here's the frameworks. I'm following the steps, you know, I'm at three and then I'm going to go four and then I'm going to go back to, and it's like, yes, it, the consistency though, doesn't necessarily mean that you're having that conversation perfectly. The consistency to me is that I'm always, I, I am always trying to improve and I'm trying to get better. And so as I'm going through these conversations and I have a terrible conversation where I, I mess up, I say the wrong thing, uh, whatever it may be, but it's like, okay, what am I taking from that? And then using to improve and grow from mm -hmm. and then build off of that. And so I think that had a lot to do with, because, you know, having conversations, um, with my wife and she would say okay well i've asked you for you know space before and right now you're not respecting that that wish it's like okay there's a there's a red, internal red flag to myself there where i'm not picking up on what she's saying not respecting her and so it's just building off of that and just you're, you're just slowly building blocks building blocks and you just see that exp exponentially grow because you're you're growth happens more and more faster faster so for for that i mean that was big was just being consistent with trying to grow from it and yeah um, love that you, you know it, it was hard though with the resistance because you're you know i was having to practice on outside sources and so when i began dating outside it was for me it's like this is great practice you know I, i'm <laughs> I'm not going to be finding my, my future, you know, wife 
or life partner at this point, but this is great practice. And so it helped me a ton to be able to do that and be like, holy crap, this is amazing. I'm having the deepest conversations of my life with somebody I just met. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, that, that was the large thing for me. And then along with that was building out the, the mentality and the bulletproof vest before actually even attempting to have those conversations. <clears throat> Yeah. Because and the I think, conversations get real brutal real, real quick. <laughs> and if yeah, you're not yeah. ready for it, you're screwed. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting too is I want to go to this next point of being a performer in mm-hmm. relationships and life in general. And we always say this from the beginning in module one, we say you need to have a performer's mindset. Yes. If you look at any performer, whether that's an athlete, um, a magician, a singer, they practice for mm-hmm. a long time, for years, for that two-hour performance. Yep. And your relationship is the same thing. You want to yep. have a conversation. It could be a five-second response from you, but that five seconds was bred from years, yep. or months in your case, close to a year of training, yep. of practicing, of role-playing, of understanding the principles, et cetera. And what you said was key there. Before you talk, you got to make sure you have your bulletproof vest Yes. You got to make sure that you have your frameworks right. Yep. Um, did you in the beginning? I'm sure you did. Like you, you probably tried the frameworks a lot. Yep. How many times did you get KO'd? In the beginning? Oh God, <laughs> so, so many. Uh, yeah, and and my thing with our relationship was whenever there was conflict or argument, um, naturally, I I. I'm not a fan of conflict. Um, and so I, in the past, would tend to shut down, um, which has its whole set of issues. And, mm. you know, it, it, it shut down or, you know, I came off very judging. And so having those conversations without, you know, trying to dig deep into stuff that we hadn't uncovered within our relationship without having that mentality set was yeah a lot of conversations of me just fire hose of just crap to the face and not being ready for it yeah and just shutting down and it made things worse and and that whole yeah the first six months I mean I I remember when she told me we were getting separated and you know how terrible and, and bad I felt and if I would have known the next six months, like that her telling me we were getting separated is, is no big deal at this point for what we, I went through for the next six months of actually starting to uncover some of those things. Yeah. So yeah. Rough. I think um, yeah. So in my experience, I think when people say the beginning was rough, I think it's two kinds of problems you normally. The first kind is when you actually in a, in a real life conversation and your partner says something that just dumbfounds you. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to respond to that. I don't know how yep. I'm supposed to turn that from negative to positive, honestly. Yep. That's the first kind of problem. Second kind of problem is when your partner says something, you it upsets you. Yep. But your idea of being bulletproof is, sorry to use this word, but clench your asshole to keep your shit in, yep. right? Yep. You're just holding it in. Mm-hmm. And, Eventually, though, she's going to say something that is so hurtful that you blow up. Oh, yeah. And if you, even if you don't blow up, your anger already will prevent you from actually coming up with the creative ideas to dance around yep. that campaign. Yep. I remember you facing both those problems yep. in your journey. So tell, yep. tell us about the first one, right? Um, you know, again, the frameworks is not a script, right? So a lot of people, no. they first come into this program thinking like, well, there's four frameworks. How is this four framework supposed to let me dance in a hundred, a thousand conversations, yep. right? What was your journey? And getting from the beginning to where like, how can it be continue to get dumbfounded to now where you literally take anything you can and go, hmm, let me, let me spar with that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, it, well, like I said, in, in the beginning, because of not having the right mentality, 
you know, my focus was just all over the place with these conversations. Um, you know, trying to say the right thing or trying to just like appease or just like my intentions were not there. You know, I, it was not untethered. Um, it, was, it was just bad. So it was like taking shots in the dark, essentially, of mm. just like, well, this didn't work la last time. Let me try something completely opposite. And then taking that shot and then just, you know, being that fire hose of shit back in the face again. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't remember the exact time frame where it took place, where it, it finally, there was a couple of things that really clicked and resonated. One was not focusing on the outcome and finally understanding what that meant. Um, I, rem I remember one of the conversations uh, which she wanted to discuss about the, the new person she was seeing. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving over to her place and I replayed, <laughs> I on repeat in my head, the entire drive just said, fuck the outcome, fuck the outcome, fuck the outcome in my head, the entire drive over there. And yeah. then when I had an awesome, amazing conversation, because I ignored, like, I, I didn't want to get to the bottom of it. I didn't want to, like, drive my agenda, whatever it may be. I was just there for that conversation to hear her out. Yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't trying to solve a problem. Like, I was just going to be there to just intently listen, make her feel understood. And that was it. And it was an amazing conversation. Yeah. And after walking away from that conversation, even though it was a brutal conversation to have, um, it, it was just this weird feeling because it's like, oh my God, that was an amazing conversation. Like the, the topic, the outcome was not desirable, <laughs> but to be able to have that conversation and for her to actually open up as much as she opened up about it. It's like, I, I've never done this before in my life. That was the beginning of the healing processes. Yeah. The healing process doesn't start by you fixing problems. The healing process starts when you allow that safety to be created and you can finally yep. talk about your issues. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I notice I'm going to pinpoint something you said that is interesting. So we know a performer has frameworks and mindsets. Any mm -hmm. performer, basketball player, they have frameworks and mindsets, different frameworks, of course, but they have frameworks and mindsets. Yep. But there's a difference between what we call a uh, outcome-based performer versus mm -hmm. an identity-based performer, right? A lot of yep. people, they learn this stuff because they want to have, they yep. want to get the relationship back. And as long as yep. you have that intention, I will do this because I want to have this outcome. Yep. You can't learn properly, for, first of all. Nope. Uh, nothing you do will ever seem genuine. Mm -mm. People will hate conversations with you. <laughs> yep. Especially people will hate hearing about your changes. Yes. But once you switch that to where I want to change because this is who I am. Yeah. I'm going to talk this way because this is who I am. Yep. Right. You do it because you are not, you do it because you want to have. That's yep. what we refer to as the identity shifting portion. Yep. Right. Um, well, in, in so that was, yeah, go ahead. You know, just once, once that realization took place, you know, and my, my wife had told me, I don't even know, let, let's say dozens of times that, you know, you're just trying to be manipulative or you're, you're X, Y, and Z. And when you're, when you're searching or seeking that outcome, your intentions are to get her to see things your way. In which case you are trying to manipulate the situation. So subconsciously, it's, it definitely wasn't a conscious thing that I was trying yeah. to achieve, but it was taking place. And, you know, I, when I had that realization and again, it just how much smarter my wife is than me and going to her and being like, you saw this the entire time you were telling me the entire time. And I just like ignored it. And it's like, okay, well, I think I'm going to start listening to you more <laughs> because you're actually a really smart person. Uh, yeah. Not that I thought she was dumb, but 
she was a lot more insightful and a lot more emotionally in tune than I was. And so it's been really awesome through this process of actually, yeah, I've learned tools and, and everything and, and new mindsets here, mm-hmm. which has allowed me to engage with her and actually learn from her as well, which yeah. has been absolutely amazing. I think part of that becoming a better performer, especially in relationships, a big part of that is exactly what you just said. I'm actually talking to a guy right now and he's a client. Mm. Sometimes, you know, you get difficult clients. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but this guy is showing all the red flags of like how people approach the program. And I'm telling him, dude, you are red flagging. And then he's not taking it well, of course, because he's still using his old knowledge, his old thinking to figure out like what's wrong or right. 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 Um, And I think the hard part about my job sometimes is you're teaching someone mindsets that they've been having for God knows how long. Yep. And there's so many blind spots and there you have made so many reasons of why you believe the things you do. Right. Um, and so that's exactly what you face in your relationship. So sometimes we are in a relationship, our partners are trying to tell us what they need, what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. But it just goes over our heads because we think like, yep. well, that can't be it. Or yep. we just don't think they're right. There's anything yep. to them because we think we are right. You know, yep. Until we humble down and we go, oh, oh, oh. now I see. <laughs> that, that ego, that ego is a terrible thing. Uh, yeah. it just, it, and you're, you're right. Throughout our relationship, she has stated, and it's, again, mind shift change of, you know, her expressing her needs and how she's feeling isn't necessarily a reflection of who I am or my value as a person. And so if she's expressing, you know, you're being manipulative or um, you are being, you know, you're being too clingy or something like that, that that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person or anything. That just means that's what her needs are. And that I should be learning more about that and what it means. And then we can get to a resolution that works for both of us. Yeah. Problem it's solved. Funny. I am. Um, I want to bring up to the third point here, which is about process versus, versus product. Because I think this transitions super nicely to it. Hmm. I think a lot of people, when they think about my program or even relationships, working on the relationships, they're thinking, I need to become the perfect product. Right. I need to show my partner how alpha I am, how powerful I am, right. how perfect I am, how I have, I don't make mistakes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. That's not what they're looking for at all. In nope. fact, if you say that, they will never believe you <laughs> because nope. nobody is perfect. Nope. What we say in the program is like, they're looking for a perfect process, not yep. a perfect product. And so yep. here, if your partner were to say to you, I, you are making a mistake right now. Mm-hmm. If you have the mindset of a perfect product, you will get defensive. And people yep. will like impose their power thinking that, oh, this is me being powerful. I'm telling her, yep. let me tell you. Yep. But when you have a mindset of a perfect process, you will just say, hey, look, part of my changes here is that now I want to pe- for people to tell me how much I've effed up Yep. <laughs> because I want to learn from that. And it's funny when you just change that paradigm like that, it just changes people around you. You create yeah. safety. You get less defensive. You actually grow faster. Yeah. And people actually see your growth a lot faster as well. People, get, they don't need to self-preserve and get all angry at you because what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's just amazing the, the conversations now from, it, like, she's, she has been emotionally in tune, emotionally intelligent. I have not been. Um, and until recently, but <laughs> it, it's just been amazing to be able to have these conversations where, and I look back sometimes as we're having these conversations and just like have flashbacks from times past where I'll just, you know, it's a quick flash of like, oh, you, you would have felt like you were being personally attacked right now, or you would have felt like mm-hmm. she was being offensive or um, she didn't appreciate you because of X, Y, and Z, because she's telling you something that you're doing wrong, or mm. she would like to be seen different. 
and to be able to go through and have those conversations and recognize, and, and I've told her, I don't know, at least a dozen times since we've, you know, kind of been talking that I, I'm still me. I'm still an idiot. Like I'm, I'm still going to be making mistakes and I'm not sitting here and telling you that like, look, I'm changed. I'm, I'm this perfect person because I'm not, I'm going to be, I'm going to annoy you. I'm going to do, you know, say wrong things from time to time. The difference is I want you to tell me when those happen. I want to hear about them. I want to talk about them. And then I want to solve them together with you. Yeah. And I welcome to hear all of the things that are, you know, either just struggling with or, or being bothered with, because I want those conversations because one, it helps me continue to grow on my path because I don't want to, you know, I, I've been in the program for what, 11 months now. Like, I don't want to stop where I'm at now. I want to continue to grow and to can you continue to grow requires feedback. So I want that feedback. And then two is just going to make our relationship that much better. So yeah, just, yeah, you're following the process and ignoring the product entirely. Um, because it's going to come, the product's going to come from the process. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so funny, you know, people think like creating safety, you need to be the perfect person to yeah. basically, you know, we have this image and this archetype in society of this alpha male, like this James Bond type character who's perfect in every way. And their woman just goes like, ah, oh, you're perfect in every way. Let me just, right. let me just surrender to you. Yep. It's like, I don't think that exists realistically. Nope. You know, we, yeah. we watch like Corey Wayne, all, all these guys, they have this idea of this James Bond-esque type male. Yep. That's not what power is. That's not what relation, being a male figure should be. Right? Sure. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing more unsafe than being in the presence of someone who needs to be seen like they're perfect. Right. Because then yep. if they're not, and you feel unhappy with them, you can't tell them that because nope. they need to be perfect. And this yep. is a big problem for me, Scott, because I'm a marriage coach. So whenever I have to confront my own imperfections, it's hard. Mm. <laughs> it's extra hard. Sure. Like you are supposed to be this person who has no <laughs> flaws, but I do have flaws. And this lesson of focus on the process and process growth, not being a perfect product, yep. that I need to remind myself of that every single day too. Yeah. It's really hard. And that actually yeah. makes people feel even safer. And now it becomes a teamwork where your partner feels like she's a part of your growth. Yeah. Which is even more beautiful, you know? Well, and it's to, to have that shift, it, it almost releases, it, it does, for me, it releases a ton of pressure <laughs> because it's, I, I don't <laughs> have to make sure that I'm saying all the right things. I don't have to, like, as long as I'm just, continuing to focus on improving and growing, uh, whether that's uh, through emotional intelligence, whether that's through um, it, you know, dating, whether whatever it is within our relationship, then for me, it makes it easy because then I'm just focused on taking that one next step. You know, I, I'm not looking at the finish line. I'm not looking at the top of the mountain. I'm just looking at the ground right in front of me and taking that next step every day and taking one step is a whole hell of a lot easier than looking at the top of the mountain and saying, Oh crap, I gotta get up there. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's just, yeah. It, making that transitional shift um, and, and letting go and just, it, it's going to happen if it happens. And um, thankfully with me, um, my wife just being the person who she is, um, it, it's allowed it to happen. So thankful for it. I mean, today is I wake up in the morning and I'm just I, I'm baffled. I can't believe, yeah, where 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 we are. And yeah. <laughs> it, it's yeah, better it's, believe it. <laughs> it's bizarro world. So yeah, love and life. Um, I think I think you brought up an interesting point too uh, before we started this call, which was. You know, you got blocked at some point. And a lot of yeah. people thinking here would be like, how 
was it possible that you were able to showcase your changes? How was your partner even able to see your changes, et cetera? The point is this, your partner is always watching. She will never tell you this, yep. right? And not only is your partner watching, they want you to succeed because you are yep. the person they've decided to spend the rest of their life with at some point, mm -hmm. okay? They actually care about you. They yep. want you to succeed. They, they, they have dreamt about this future with you for years. <laughs> yep. So they are looking at your actions. They're looking at you. They're watching and they want you to succeed. Now, yep. they will never tell you this because, nope. again, of the paradox of change. If they make it easy for you, they don't know for sure if your changes are real or not. And no. it's not like something they consciously do, these tests. It's right. something we subconsciously do because we want to see the real answers. And you do the same at work, at life. You yeah. do the same thing. You test people sometimes, not consciously, but subconsciously. Sure. But a lot of people don't get that, right? A lot of people, they look at, this and they go, oh, I need to showcase all my changes to my partner. I need to market myself. I need to tell her all these things, but they don't know that their partner is watching them this whole time. But the very fact that you're still trying to play all these games mm -hmm. and trying to get her back shows her that yep. you haven't changed. You might be saying you've changed, but it shows her you haven't changed, yep. which is really interesting to me. It's a very paradoxical thing that happens, but the more you try to pull her in, the more she pulls away. Yep. And it goes into this saying that we have of no one has relationship problems. People have problems with itself that reflects in the relationship. Yes. Right? And I think you mentioned to me also as well that very quickly, when you first joined the program, you joined because you wanted an outcome. You wanted to get your relationship back. Yep. But then quickly that changed into, I just want to work on myself yes. for the sake of working on myself. Yep. Tell us what that shift was like. What took... What catalyzed that shift for you? Um, I mean, really, I mean, honestly, hitting, you know, within, you know, our, our verbiage, you know, the big dip, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Um, but, but getting to the point of just realizing that I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm clueless. I'm, I'm screwing this up. I'm making everything worse. Um, you know, it, in, in the beginning, it was like everything I was doing within the program was just solely focused on just, okay, quick track. I don't want to be apart from my wife. I feel miserable. I feel lonely. Um, how do I get her back as soon as humanly possible? So I'm just going to binge watch all, all these lessons. I'm going to pick these sections because, you know, this is a good script, you know, oh, that's a good thing to, to say type thing. And just how much worse everything got because of it. Um, yeah. To then just make the switch of like, okay, well, things are continuing to get worse. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to where I'm hoping to get. So why don't I just actually do what I'm supposed to be doing, which is just work on myself. And because this doesn't work very good for me and I don't want to go through this again. Mm -hmm. And so making that shift and, you know, to hit on your point about like how to showcase, you know, when we're basically not communicating anything like that, um, you know, before that there have been a lot of conversations where she felt like I was trying to push her getting back into a relationship, uh, and her consistently asking for space. Mm -hmm. And so when she first did it, you know, I was like taken back, but then I realized like, oh, because I'm not giving her what she's asking for, she's just doing it by herself. So here's yet again, another example within our relationship of her asking for something that I'm not allowing to happen that she has to force on her by herself. So just had some major realizations like, oh my God, she's still actually trying to save this relationship because she, she could, she could at that point have just completely cut off conversation whatsoever, yeah. filed for a divorce, never told me a single thing. I could have just gotten the, the divorce in the mail, the paperwork in the mail, and it could have been over. 
but she was still communicating some of that stuff with me. Yeah. So I knew she was still trying to work and save the relationship. As wild as that was to have that realization. Um, and once we began talking again, I actually asked her that question of, you know, it, it feels to me like, you know, you're asking for space and stuff like that, which I totally respect, go for it. Mm -hmm. But it feels to me like you're actually still trying to, you know, work and save this relationship. And it's like, well, yeah, dumbass. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, oh. yeah. Well, you could have told me that this? like <laughs> six months ago <laughs> it made life a little bit easier. But, but uh, again, she couldn't have told you. She couldn't have told no. you because again, the problem that she has is she has trusted you so many times. Yep. Right. And you've promised so many times. Yep. If she made it easy, yep. If she told you that, yep. She doesn't know. She will never know. Are, did he change because there was hope? Yeah. Because I, she, he could get me back, or did he change because yep. he wanted to change? Yep. She wanted to see that genuineness with you. Yeah, and, and we're still there today. And we're still there yeah. today with her. Yeah. You know, she's she's opening up. We're we're definitely having more and more conversations, but there's still there's still days where it's like. Mm, I'm not it's sure going to be like that you. for a while. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. like that for a while because, and I was talking to Jason, and for those of you listening, Jason is uh, an employee of mine who started off as a client. But Jason is also kind of facing some instances where, it's, you know, your partner has been conditioned to see the relationship, to feel a certain way about the relationship for a while. Yeah. So there's sometimes where, like, she feels something bad, and her first instinct may not be to come to you. Yeah. Right. It sh her first instinct is to keep it to herself, let it fester, yep. get annoyed by it, blow up <laughs> before coming yep. to you. Yep. And it's your job to keep reconditioning that relationship. You know, yeah. she got this way because you conditioned her. The culture yeah. conditioned her to act that way. The world conditioned her to act that way. You recondition that. And that's a yep. long term journey. I'm still doing that as well because yeah. the outside world, where her work, her parents, they're reconditioning her in other ways too. You know, yep. we're always getting reconditioned. So yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and for, you know, hitting that note and just recognizing like where we're at right now is when she is opening up and sharing, like those are huge moments mm -hmm. and recognizing and, and regardless of what the topic is like those conversations need to be done with intention and you know caring and, and going through it because you know 10 years of our relationship she was trained basically you know towards the end of our relationship of she didn't tell me anything she didn't tell yeah. me what she was doing with her friends she didn't tell me what was going on with her day because it had gotten to the point where she no longer felt safe sharing anything with me. Mm -hmm. And so now to the point where she is feeling safe, like that's, that is to be cherished yeah. because I've been on the flip <laughs> side of that. And that is a terrible feeling to go through, you know, having a relationship where nothing gets shared with you. So, yeah. What's so interesting too is, you know, a lot of people hearing that me saying, for example, oh, this is going to be a problem for a while. You're going to have to work on that for the rest of your life. Yeah, they they think of that as like, oh my god, this is that sucks. Mm. <laughs> but that's precisely the problem, right? Yep. Um, a lot of people see conflicts and difficult moments as a threat, as an yeah. inconvenience, as something to be avoided, etc. But here we learn part of the mindset shift that we learn, and part of having a thriving mindset, being able to flip the script in a way, is us. First, starting with us being able to see conflicts as a positive thing, as an opportunity, right? As, yep. as an opportunity for you to not only recondition your partner, but also show your partner here that, hey, in this relationship, this is not you versus me. This is yep. me and you versus everything yep. else. Yep. It, clo it, it bonds you together. Yep. I love it when we have conflicts, especially when the conflicts are sometimes created by me or sure. created by other stuff like be blow yep. up a tire or whatever it is i love that it's like mm, yeah my this is my time to shine right yep. <laughs> yeah yep yeah it, it's it's been amazing and it's um you know I, it, she had messaged me the other day about 
um, how she was kind of missing having those alone times that she used to have on some evenings or weekends when the kids were with me. And it's just like, man, was so grateful when she told me that because had she not told me that, she would just bottle that in. She would have been miserable. That misery, even though it's not necessarily created by me, would have bled over into our relationship. It could have started causing, you know, um, anger, resentment, because she no longer had those moments. And then that just builds onto the next thing, builds onto the next thing. And so when she told me that, it's like, okay, well, even if she's saying that she, she feels like she's spending too much time with me, um, but that's how she's feeling. And that's great. Like, what? let's talk about it. Like, what does that look like? Do you need a couple of nights a week where, um, you know, you, ha you have a free mom night, you're, you're free to do whatever. You need a weekend day where you go out for the entire day or, or what does that look like to you? And to have that conversation, her to feel good about it, her to feel safe about it. All that was great, but at the end of it, it was just like, God, how awesome is it that she's sharing that? But that's, that she, I think, the hard part, right? Like, um, you know, people always ask me, uh, how come you don't, if this frameworks are so important, how come you don't talk more about it in your YouTube videos? Mm. Because they can be misconstrued so many ways. Like, sure. Most people's understanding of how to talk, how to listen is so different. And in order for me to teach the frameworks, I got to tell you how to listen, how the, the mindsets of like fundamental attribution error, getting rid yep. of that, how to handle with resi uh, resistance. I mean, there's so many precursors to the frameworks. We spend yep. in the new version, right? Uh, it's going to be launched in like three weeks, two weeks, hopefully. All right. Um, we spend two phases, which is seven videos each. Each video is about two, two and a half hours. Okay. So okay. 35 hours building up to the frameworks. Yep. <laughs> and people expect me to like talk about that in a YouTube videos. It's impossible. Yeah. No. Now, the hard part is that, you know, if you want to create safety, you have to, it's, you have to navigate around all these paradoxes of ways of thinking, ways of approaching, and you have to unprogram a lot of the ways. And one of the ones you mentioned was you, you're, you're, partner comes to you with a problem. Mm -hmm. Your initial instinct is, is to think, I can create safety if I show her that I'm the man who can solve it for her. Yep. I'm the man with answers. If I give her answers, if I show them that I'm a man with answers, she will feel safer. But yep. that's the opposite of what happens. Yep. What should happen is that I am the person, the leader who can guide the conversation, make her feel understood. Mm-hmm empower her to solve her own problems, recondition yep. over time, that's safety. Yeah. <laughs> so it's even when people understand what safety means, they still misunderstand what it means to actually <laughs> build yes. it. And it takes a while yeah. to, to get around those things, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, it's... And again, it goes back to the mind shift changes um you know to, to even entertain that conversation a year ago it, it just wouldn't have happened you know it'd be like um uh, me to, taking it so personally and just shutting down and just shutting down the conversation and everything and just no that's that's great awesome thanks thanks for sharing me that <laughs> And thanks I hate telling, you. Thanks, yeah. thanks for telling me that. <laughs> thanks for telling me you don't want to hang out with me. Got it. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's I love it. it I love it. Yeah. So. Um, so, Scott, we're about time here. Um, this is by far my favorite conversation so far. I feel like right. we got really deep on a lot of things. Yeah. This could have gone two hours, I think, and we sure. still would we're not run out of things to talk about, but nobody has two hours to, to spare yep. to listen to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, people listening to this, um, they are probably in the same position as you are in. And I think one thing mm -hmm. we learned from the program is that no one's situation is really that unique. Um, mm -hmm. No one's, like literally no one's. And people nope. always think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. No one's nope. situation is unique. So what would you say? What, what would be 
you know, the main takeaway, I guess, you would give to these people uh, who are perhaps skeptical uh, about whether they need to even work on themselves, whether working on themselves can lead to their partner coming back, um, or whether this is the right program for them. I don't know. Like, yeah. what do you say? I mean, for me, the, the realization of um, my old self, my approach was the key responsible factor for me getting into the position that I got into. Um, so working on myself, improving myself was the only option and the only way to get to a better life. Um, you know, cause I, I was not in a good place. I was, you know, I had last couple of years of my relationship. I mean, I'd lost over 20 pounds. Like it's just stress, anxiety, everything. It was just health, everything. And to be able to get into the program, to learn how to properly process emotions, um, from your partner, how to properly frame things, how to, uh, think through processes, how to establish, you know, discipline to generate the, you know, the tools and everything you need and whether or not you save your relationship or not, you're, you're going to be in a better place because I had gotten to the place where I was okay. I, I didn't want to lose my relationship, but I had gotten to a place where I was okay with it being over. So I still wanted it to work out, but I understood she's seeing other people. She's happy. Um, I can't dictate my happiness. I can't dictate my life around somebody else. It has to be generated internally. And then it has to be moving forward. Life has to be shared. It, it can't be dictated upon another person. And without going through all this, I would have never been able to get there. Yeah. I would have been stuck in the same place. I would have been doing the Band-Aid fixes. I would have been making promises I'm going to break um, because it's it's been a complete, it, I say the mind shift, but it's been a complete mind shift change. Yeah. The outlook yeah. on relationships are completely different. You know, I think that's I, the hardest part for people to understand sometimes. And it took me a while to understand this. It's that illusion of action again. It's, you know, you think that when you tell yourself, I'm doing this for me, not for my relationship, then mm. subconsciously you're giving on, up on the relationship a bit. Yep. But ironically, it's not until you do that, you be non attached like that, and you do it solely for yourself, and you're not looking for an outcome, yep. that you do get the outcome. Yep. It's really funny. It's just how this journey works. It's how we deal with when we deal with emotions. It's... Yep. Your, emo your actions can never seem genuine emotionally if you attach a condition to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it, 100, 100%. And, you know, I, I feel the difference even today where it's being in the relationship we're in now, how I feel internally feels completely different than it did before mm -hmm. because before you know my, my emotions my happiness my everything was derived from the relationship yeah. and so everything was centered and focused around that relationship and now to be able to be like no I know who I am I know my value I generate my own happiness but I want to share it with you and I want you to do the same for me but it's no longer like this, you know, the unhealthy attachment of which drove us apart. And yeah. so, you know, it, had that not gone away, it never would have been fixed. So yeah. it's more attractive too. It's someone who is interdependent, who can store something from within. Yep. They come to the relationship complete. And that's what <laughs> leaders do. Leaders don't, le leaders are not parasites. Nope. You know, they're nope. interdependent. They realize that yep. I need to be whole by myself but I can still work as a team, but yeah. I need to be whole first in, yep. in order for me to work as a team. Um, perfect. So Scott, 
Thank you. I think we're gonna wrap this up here. For people who want to apply for the Relationships Revival program, uh, you want to start with clicking the link down below this video with the masterclass. It's going to be an hour and a half, but it's worth it. <laughs> At the end of the masterclass, you will learn how to apply for the program. Um, and then be sure to pay attention to the application process because we are very selective with the people we choose to work with. But I hope to see you, a lot of you uh, in the program soon and really change your life forever. Scott, thank for you sure. for joining me. Uh, we'll see you in the program soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff.